Good morning, YouTube. Welcome to the Reptile Barn. Today on the vlog, we are asking a question. What is the best pet reptile? So, you can take that a couple of ways. What's the best beginner reptile? Or what attributes make a reptile the best pet it can be? Uh, or if you have other criteria, that's fine too. Uh, before we tell our opinion, I would love it if some of you would go down in the comments and let us know your unbiased opinion from what I'm about to say what you think makes the best pet reptile, what species are the best pet reptiles, okay? So, generally speaking, six species are going to be named very quickly when a lot of people get together and are talking about what makes the best pet reptile, okay? Ball pythons, corn snakes, and boas, as in, you know, red tail boas, um, whether that's the true red tails or the BCIs, doesn't, doesn't really matter are the three snakes that are most often named, especially ball pythons and corn snakes. For lizards, bearded dragons and leopard geckos, and increasingly, crested geckos as well, are named as the best pet lizards. Also, just an aside, if you hear weird sounds in the background, my dog is chewing on a new bone, and that's just gonna continue. <laughs> so sorry. Um, but, I guess what we're looking at in this vlog is why is it that those species are always named and are there other criteria that some people might want to know about before they just automatically go for one of those six species. So the, the reasons I think those species are so frequently pointed to are first price. You can get any of those six species for very inexpensive. Um, they just, you don't have to. I mean, you can get high-end morphs in most of those species that are very expensive too, but you can generally get very inexpensive ball pythons, corn snakes, boas, beardies, leopard geckos, and crested geckos. Two, they're extremely easy to breed. I, maybe I shouldn't say that as a breeder, but they are. Um, some species of reptile, it is very difficult to get this their environment so perfect that they feel comfortable to breed. But those species that I named, they're pretty easy to breed. Uh, and that kind of attaches to the next point. They're very available. There's tens of thousands of, hundreds of thousands of them available to choose from. You can just go online to Morph Market and peruse dozens or hundreds of breeders. Pick and choose exactly what you want in those species, right? Um, they're just... They're available. They're everywhere. Your, your local pet stores have them. Your local breeders have them. Your local reptile shows have them. Every single online resource for reptiles has them. Uh, they're very available. Um, and that kind of leads again into the next thing. Captive bred animals generally are easier as a, as a starter reptile, right? They're going to be healthier. They're going to be more habituated to humans. Uh, they just, they are. Uh, I'm not saying that it's always wrong to get a wild-caught animal, but it's easier to start with a captive-bred animal. And in those six species, again, some of them you can't even get wild-caughts anymore. I mean, I, I don't. there's no such thing as wild-caught crested geckos. But they're bred by the tens of thousands, so you can get captive-bred all six of those animals, right? Um, a sixth... A sixth... Another reason that they're pointed to a lot, and this to me is kind of sad, they're very resilient. They're forgiving of husbandry errors. You know, you your heat goes out in your house and you realize, oh my gosh, my ball python hasn't had a hot spot for three days. Your ball python's probably fine. As long as it didn't get freezing cold, you know. But uh, I don't see that as a good thing necessarily because we shouldn't think, I'm going to get an animal that allows me to make all these mistakes. That's, uh, that gets a little sketchy. But... For a beginner, it is a little bit comforting to know my corn snake's pretty darn tough. <laughs> it's going to be okay. If the size of mouse I feed it isn't exactly perfect, it's probably still okay. You know, If my bearded dragon's ratio of insects to salad is a little bit off, you're okay. Uh, these are tough animals. Again, they're resilient, right? And then the last one, relatively speaking, they are not enormously... 
uh, space requiring animals. Of course, a big boa needs quite a bit of space. In my opinion, a bearded dragon needs quite a bit of space, but in general, those six species don't need enormous enclosures, right? Certainly, you want to keep uh, many of the others, an iguana or a monitor, as far as other lizards go, they need 10 times the space of a leopard gecko, 100 times the space. Um, they just do. Or an arboreal animal needs a much more uh, spacious enclosure. They just do. And uh, again, to me, that kind of puts us in the mindset that, oh, I can take all these corn snakes and cram them into these little drawers. That's sad. <laughs> we really want to move away from that mindset of let's give our animals the least amount of whatever, space, care, whatever that's required to keep them alive and breeding. I don't like that mindset. But you can keep a corn snake happy and thriving in a smaller enclosure than, say, uh, an Amazon tree boa, something arboreal that needs, you know, height and everything. Anyway, enough of that. So there are other species that could be added to that kind of core six species, but that's a good list. However, I don't agree with it. I don't think that you should just unilaterally say those six species are the best pet reptiles or those six species are the best beginner reptile. I don't, I'm not sure that's true. Um, what other considerations might you need to make before it's just saying this is the best pet? Well, do you have a mentor? Uh, and what I mean, it doesn't have to be like, no, I signed on as an apprentice to this breeder, but, but more like, do you have uh, a friend or a neighbor or a sibling that keeps a certain species that you have a lot of experience with that is someone who's available to you? You can, you can ask them questions any time of day and they're going to answer somebody who is a mentor, right? That helps enormously. And if they happen to keep a king snake, <coughs> excuse me, instead of a corn snake, then maybe a king snake would be a great pet for you. You love their king snake. You've held it all the time. You've helped feed it. You've babysat it over the weekend when he was camping. That might be a great option for you. Have a, a mentor, right? Second, how much research are you willing to do? Um, you know, you can get a, a pretty good care guide or a care sheet for those six species and just read one care sheet you have a basic idea of how to keep that animal. You go to, you know, the Reptiles Magazine or somewhere, um, and they'll, they'll give you a care guide that breaks down, you know, temperature, humidity, all these things. And if you follow it, well, that's, that's good. Now, you should do more research than read one care guide before you get your animal. But uh, if you're going to go keep something that is very, very, very difficult to keep, you're going to need to do a lot of research. And if you are dead set on... Uh, crocodilian, for example, you better do an absolutely staggering amount of research before you get that animal. I'm not trying to say don't get the animal, but impulse buys with live animals should that should just be illegal. <laughs> you should not do that to a live animal. But the third consideration that I really want to focus on in this vlog is what are you passionate about? Um, I don't think there's anything that can make up for passion. Uh, if you have been just obsessed with, in our case, a blue tree monitor for years, and we've researched it and researched it and researched it and researched it and researched it, we've talked to multiple breeders on the phone, emails, text messaging, Facebook, we've picked their brains, multiple yeah. breeders, we've built an enclosure, it's completely ready. We didn't start with a bearded dragon or a leopard gecko. We started our lizard life with a blue tree monitor, which is considered an advanced species to keep. Uh, and we've had them for a few years. They're doing great. We love them. We don't regret it in the slightest. That is what we wanted and that's what we got. And I'm very happy that we made that decision instead of listening to some people who are like, no, 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 you gotta start with an easier species. You can't jump right in like that. Well. We weren't as passionate about the other species. That's what we wanted. So we did our research. We even kind of found a mentor and we made it happen, right? So I guess to me, there should be two rules. Instead of just saying, you know, well, let's figure out a price and availability and all those other things I talked about, there should be two rules. One, 
the best pet reptile is the one you are prepared for, okay? Is your enclosure at your house set up with the heat going, the humidity is correct, the hides are in place, the substrate is in place, the water is in place, everything is ready, you've measured the basking site, you've measured the cold side of the cage, you've placed your hides correctly, everything's ready to go. If you're prepared that way, good. If not, don't get your reptile yet. Um, do you know the requirements? What are the humidity requirements and how are you gonna make sure that they get there? Some people online are gonna be like, oh, you can't use a glass enclosure or you can't use this or you can't use that. Well, you are the one who's gonna be buying or building your cage. Just make sure it meets all the requirements. Make sure you know what those requirements are and that for an extended period of time you've been measuring them and it's meeting the requirements. Are you prepared for feeding this animal? Uh, if you have a snake that can just eat rodents, that just means go online to Rodent Pro or wherever and order a bulk shipment of rats or whatever they are and you're good to go. Good. Excellent. Do you know how much it's going to cost though? You know, you buy five uh, or 50 large rats or whatever uh, uh, years long supply or six months or whatever you want to get. That's expensive. You know, you're going to spend several hundred dollars on, on rats. Can you do that year after year? Um, that's something to consider. Have you gone through... Well, the animal costs this much, the enclosure costs probably more than the animal, the feed costs this much, the bulbs and the heat cost this much, my fogger costs this much, my substrate that's going to need to be replaced every once in a while to clean the cage costs this much. Have you done the math? Almost like you're doing a little business plan. Make sure you have the funds and that you project in the future to continue to have the funds. Because as much as, yes, chase your passions, don't chase your passions if it's going to mean, well, in six months I realize this is more expensive than I thought and now I have to surrender this awesome animal to a shelter. That's, that's not ideal, right? Um, the last thing I would say as far as be prepared is know the special needs of the species you selected. Sailfin dragons are prone to nose rubbing. We had to be ready for that. If we had not been ready, uh, our male specifically, could have rubbed his nose down to the teeth. I mean, they really are prone to nose rubbing. We were ready, he's totally fine, his nose is in great shape. But that's something that if we hadn't already been aware of, we'd have been scrambling to figure it out because he could have just in six hours done horrible damage to his nose. Um, things like fasting. For my ball python, not this little guy, but a, an older, mature ball python is fasting in the winter time. I'm not terribly concerned, right? Um, any snake that goes into any sort of brumation um, and they're fasting in the winter time, that's, that's probably just fine. But if you have a three week old snake and it's not eating and you're like, oh, it's just fasting. I read about that online. That's probably not good, right? You don't want to uh, make assumptions based on one species when really the species that you're working with has some sort of special needs. Um, some animals need to burrow. They really want to burrow. If you don't provide the correct substrate and the correct amount of it, you are removing a, a life requirement from this animal uh, that is just a special need you weren't aware of. So my second rule, there's only two, okay? The best pet reptile is the one that you are prepared for. My second rule is the best pet reptile is the one you love the most, okay? Uh, if you love the morphs of ball pythons, but you keep going online and you see all these people just hating on ball python morphs, and that turns you away from them because there's just so much kind of bizarre rage against morphs of ball pythons, I'm sorry for you. You didn't chase what you loved because you let people talk you out of strangers online. You know, it's not like your mom had to sit down with you and said, don't get morphs of ball pythons. This is just random losers on the internet that are hating on what you love. And you stopped chasing it because of that. That's sad. I unabashedly love ball python morphs. So we have a ton of them, okay? That's one of the things we love. We also love some of the more exotic ones. A lot of people... I, I sometimes wonder if it's like a like a status thing, like, oh, my reptiles are not common, like your morphs of ball pythons. I have these rare ones and exotic ones, and I only got 
buy from this one importer who's known for his super rare... Okay, good for you, man. <laughs> but you can't even pronounce the species name of that animal that you have. Regardless, I'm sorry to rant about that, but... Please. The absolute number one rule, as far as what is the best pet reptile, is whichever one that you like. That's the best pet reptile. If you are willing to be completely prepared with research, with money, with space, with time. Uh, if, if you're prepared for it though, absolutely the best. If you have the, the actual money and the space for an alligator, get an alligator. But the actual space and time and money for an alligator is like hundreds of thousands of dollars and a giant backyard size heated enclosure with a lake in it. I mean, if you're filthy rich though, and that's what you love, go do it. But if you don't have the preparation, if you don't have that kind of money or space, don't get the alligator, even if it's what you're passionate about. I'm not, I'm not trying to say just do what you want all the time. There's still like limits and rules in life that we have to follow to be good people. But if you can provide for the animal correctly and give it an excellent life, then get the one you want. Not the one that people on your Facebook group told you you should get, right? Because they will. They absolutely will. They will say, oh, you can't start with a whatever, a blue tree monitor. You, you need to get more experience in lizards first. You can't start with a whatever, I, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm blanking here. I'm a little bit sick if you can't tell from my voice. But uh, they will tell you don't start with X animal. A retic is a good example. A lot of people are fascinated and love retics and they want to get one and they've done the research they have the space they have access to rabbits and things that you know even when the animal is bigger it's gonna be able to keep eating and so many people are like, you can't you can't start with a retic you got to get something smaller start with a ball python start with a even a boa or something well maybe but if you have the means and and that's what you're passionate about I'm gonna be kind of the voice of dissent here. Go get a retic, man. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's that's terrible. Yeah. And if you know if you're nine years old and you're like, I love retics. Well, that's a different story. Yeah. You have to be able to have the resources to take care of this animal. I do. But I don't know. I just feel really strongly about this, so I keep going on and on and on about it because I want to drive my point home. But yeah. it's just sad when people get a living creature that isn't the one they want because random haters told them to and talked them out of getting the one that they actually wanted. Uh, and it goes both ways. Maybe you want one of the more extreme, rare animals and people are trying to pull you back to the common ones. But maybe you really love the common ones, but people are like, that's lame, that's boring, you gotta get one of these cooler ones. Either way, there's gonna be people pushing you away from what you want. And you have to be ready to say, actually, no, this is what I want. And I know it because I've researched it for months. And I've talked to this breeder and I've looked at pictures of this one. And I've saved my money. I've got everything ready to go. My little baby in the background is yelling at me because he wants more bread. But uh, anyway, uh, if you're wondering why I pulled this little guy out, uh, there's two reasons. One, because he's beautiful and I just love holding my snakes. And two, because why would I have a video talking about best pet reptiles without pulling out a pet reptile? Um, this is Playa. He is a spectacularly beautiful banana pastel yellow belly clown male from Garrick to Meyer. He's eating great. He's growing in, I don't know, six months or so when he's got a lot more size on him. We might think about breeding him, but uh, whenever he's ready is good enough for me. It's just a gorgeous little snake. Uh, we looked long and hard for one of these. Uh, we wanted this exact combination of genes, and we saw one from Garrick to Meyer that was close, so we contacted him, and we're like, man, this is actually what we're looking for uh, with one other gene in it. And he's like, you know what? I have one of those. I just haven't listed it for sale yet. And we're like, Yes! So, that was awesome. Uh, but yeah, I just, uh, why have a video about reptiles without pulling out an awesome looking reptile and showing it to the camera? So, we'll be able to make all sorts of cool stuff with him. Uh, one of the reasons we bought him, 
many of you who watch the vlog already know this, but we have a female who's possibly het for clown, and we'd love to prove her out when she's big enough and when he's big enough. So we wanted to get a visual male clown to hopefully prove her out. Uh, but either way, we got a sweet addition to the reptile barn. We got him, what, back in the summer? Uh, so he's been with us for several months, but we love him. And he's been a good boy. He was a little bit skittish and scared when we first got him, but he's so good now. Um, I just love his eyes. I don't know if the camera can can see all the different colors and stuff going on in there, but uh, really spectacular animal. He's got a little dirt on his nose, it looks like, but still totally beautiful. Anyway, that is it for today. Please, please do comment what you think makes a reptile the best pet reptile. Uh, whether it's a, your first one or not, why do you think X reptile or Y reptile is the best one? Um, and what would you suggest to people? Do you disagree with me? Do you think it's silly of me to tell somebody who's never had a snake before, go get a retic? Because I did say that, but I had a bunch of qualifications behind it too. So anyways, uh, I hope I don't get raked over the coals for that too badly, but if I do, that's fine. Uh, I'll probably never see most of you face to face in my entire life, so say whatever mean things you want. <laughs> no, you guys are so nice to us. Uh, we've had dozens and dozens and dozens of videos, probably tens of thousands of views by this point. Uh, I should probably know better what my channel is doing, but I don't. But we've only had maybe five mean comments ever in the history of our whole channel. You guys have been a fantastic support to us. Um, I honestly. I expected it to be way worse. I just assumed, oh, the internet is mean. <laughs> Half the people who ever comment are going to be brutal to us, but it hasn't been the case at all. Um, and those of you who've been watching for a long time, thank you so much. Those of you who are just joining in now, uh, I hope that the content is useful to you. It helps you think in new ways about keeping reptiles and why to keep reptiles and how to keep reptiles. Uh, we try not to have this be a channel just because we breed ball pythons um, But we try to have it be a channel. that's not just about oh look we breed ball pythons. Here's our ball pythons Here they are breeding. Here's their eggs. Here's their babies. Uh, here's the ones for sale. We try not to use it as like a sales channel so much as uh, We love reptiles and this is why and if we can help people in any way with their love of reptiles That's why we make videos. So Thank you so much for watching and for all your support. It has been such a great year for us at the Reptile Barn. Uh, so many highlights, the babies we've produced, the expo, uh, it's just been awesome. So we hope that 2020 is just as fantastic uh, or more fantastic and we believe that it will be. So until next time, we're the Reptile Barn.